This is his first time on stage doing comedy. This young man is absolutely amazing. So as he rolls up onto the stage, we're gonna get this prep, right? But I know for sure you guys are gonna give a nice, warm, loud welcome to Mr. Jack system decides that your spinal cord is infected with a virus and attacks it. So my immune system's a dick. <laughs> Isn't the whole point of an immune system to keep you healthy? <laughs> Mine missed the memo on that one. <laughs> Chaos ensued. They rushed me to the hospital. I was in a coma for two weeks. When I woke up, I was paralyzed from the neck down, unable to breathe, I was on a ventilator, I couldn't even speak out loud. You wanna know how I got people's attention? <laughs> Sorry to any Ethiopians in the house. <laughs> against Ethiopians. I mean, after two weeks in a coma, I didn't eat. I probably could have passed for Ethiopia. Other than the whole being white thing. I swear, between the weight loss and all the damn clicking I was doing, people didn't know whether to visit me in the hospital or pick up the phone and sponsor me for 80 cents a day. But, uh, but, but the doctors had to level with me. They said, listen, Jack, you, you're gonna, you could be like this for the rest of your life. Do you have any questions for us? And I only had one. Does my dick work? <laughs> in my body is my tongue. <laughs> Do with that what you will. You, 
you, you gotta, you gotta use what works. <laughs> when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. When life gives you transverse myelitis, tell cripple jokes. <laughs> what did Christopher Reeve wish for before blowing out his birthday candles? To be Christopher Walken. <laughs> I'm glad we're not too PC to laugh at a few jokes. <laughs> and I usually gauge my audiences on whether or not they laugh at some of this shit. I can already tell that you guys are my kind of people. <laughs> well, not my kind of people, because my kind of people are a little fucked up. <laughs> but, but, uh, but I'm glad that you, that, that you can laugh with me on this shit. Um, I, I, I realize that I get a lot of uh, empathy and sympathy. I can see it in people. I can hear it just by the way they say things. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that there's so much concern for me. But I'll tell you, when I'm out in public and I hear some of the shit that you walkers say to me, <laughs> I have a little bit of concern for you as well. <laughs> You walkers with your fucking legs and your stairs <laughs> and all the fucking obstacles you like to go around on. Like my people don't have enough obstacles in this. But, uh, but, but I'll tell you, you guys come up with some great shit. And, uh, and I know it can be intimidating to, to approach a guy with disabilities and try to say something nice. But if I may make a suggestion, I have a game plan going in. Don't just walk up and start talking. Because you're going to just be desperate for any catch-all thing that we have in, in common. So the one thing everyone always tends to do is tell me about a cripple that they know. <laughs> or, or at least they know of. Like, oh, my son went to school with it. Uh, Andy person in a wheelchair. His name is Danny Jones. Do you know him? I don't know any, every cripple that has ever not walked the face of the earth. Although Danny Jones, the name sounds familiar. I think I fought with that asshole for an hour over a parking spot the other day. You know that guy? I won that argument though. He was only a paraplegic. Fucking pussy. <laughs> I, get, I get that all the time though. Another one people never cease to amaze me with is I'm out w with one of my buddies. Somebody walks up to, one of them, to my friend and says, can I talk to him? <laughs> I'm right here, lady. <laughs> and that time, I have to act retarded. <laughs> if, 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 if only to match wits with this moron. <laughs> Will you be my friend? <laughs> Another thing, another thing I always get, it's happened to me three times since I've been here tonight. So are you trying to shake my hand? <laughs> now, most people get a pass because they realize what they're doing and that I can't move and just give me the fist bump or something. But once you're standing there for five, ten seconds, waiting for a handshake that ain't coming. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck with you. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? You know it's difficult enough without constantly being reminded of things you can't do. They're scrambling, they're fumbling over their words. Watching them squirm is priceless. <laughs> I'm laughing, my friend's laughing. And then, if they don't take a joke, fuck them. <laughs> Honestly, 
Walk away, snowflake, all right? <laughs> then we come to the Bible thumpers, the religious right, who can't help loving God loves you. <laughs> oh, he does? <laughs> He's got a funny way of showing it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure OJ loved Nicole. <laughs> we all know how that turned out. <laughs> One time I was getting off the red line, and some guy in passing just said, Are you doing great? <laughs> What? <laughs> Last time I checked, just being paralyzed is not a skill. <laughs> I mean, it's not something I trained particularly hard for. There's no montages of me sitting down for hours while Eye of the Tiger plays in the background. <laughs> uh, my name's Jack. I can't move. What the fuck? <laughs> this next one is the dumbest thing anyone has ever said to me. Ever. Rolling through the mall one day with me my best friend and her life mate. Shout out to Bo. Uh, and, and, uh, and some guy walks up to me, never seen this guy before in my life, and says, and I quote, hey man, nice shoes. How do you keep them so clean? <laughs> Take a second with that, I'll wait. <laughs> now, you may get a pass on the handshake, you may get a pass on the, can I talk to him? But the wheelchair's gotta clue you into the fact that my shoes haven't gotten dirty in quite a long time. <laughs> It's very easy to keep your shoes clean when you don't fucking walk on them. <laughs> nice shoes, honey. And you people think I'm retarded? <laughs> Good lord. Now, turning my own tragedies into comedy for years and years on end, has warped my mind. It now has become a reflex. One of my one of my nearest and dearest friends is a teacher in, in for Teach for America in an inner city school, and he deals with kids with tremendous amounts of adversity, poverty, drug addiction, the, the works, you know what it is. He I asked him how his job was going, and he said that it's the most rewarding experiences he's ever had. He told me about one student. Two weeks into the school year, his brother killed himself. <coughs> Nothing funny about that. It gets worse. Two months later, that kid's mother could not deal with the loss of her son and killed herself. There is nothing funny about that. He said, how the hell am I supposed to teach that kid math? And I said, try a word problem. Johnny started the school year with five family members. <laughs> <laughs> One day, Johnny's brother got sad. <laughs> decided to take a bath with the toaster. <laughs> Johnny's mom started drinking a lot. 
<laughs> then Johnny's dad decided to cope by banging the next door neighbor. <laughs> Mom couldn't handle it anymore and decided to take the car for a spin in the garage. <laughs> now, if no one else in Johnny's family decides to off themselves, how many will be left to see Johnny open up his Christmas presents? <laughs> it had a happy ending. <laughs> Johnny got Christmas presents. And, and if we're really gonna be glass half full people, look on the bright side. Now Johnny doesn't have to share his Legos with his brother. <laughs> uh, I'm going to hell, but if you're laughing, you're coming. <laughs> now, I fell down the rabbit hole called YouTube the other night, watching the hot sauce challenge with my cousin. My cousin informed me that there is a hot sauce out there that's so hot that you can't eat it if you're pregnant. That's gonna come in handy, huh? You know, your girl or your wife comes home, honey, I'm pregnant. Let's celebrate tonight. I'm gonna bring home a box of hot wings. What's a chicken wing dinner, 30 bucks? A bottle of hot sauce is 10 bucks? Avoiding 18 years of child support and four years of college? Fuck it. Priceless. <laughs> I'm gonna stop buying condoms and just buy condiments from now on. <laughs> now, I'm not gonna blame my entirety, the entirety of my fucked up head on the wheelchair. I've been like this long before. Uh, anyone who's known me for a long time can vouch for that. Uh, when I was 10, my parents decided to curb some of my uh, bad behavior by sending me to Catholic school. It should be painfully obvious to all of you that it didn't work. <laughs> anyway, two years after they sent me to lovely St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, my, one of my crazy cousins, who's also in attendance tonight, bought them a, uh, a gift basket, a joke basket, full of kinky sex items. This thing had flavored body lotion, whipped cream, Barry White scented candles, the works. The icing on the cake was a pair of handcuffs. These were not cheap plastic toy aisle grocery store handcuffs. These things were like Dog the Bounty Hunter police issues. <laughs> and in a momentary lapse of sanity, my mother said, Jack, play with these handcuffs. <laughs> what she didn't see coming was that the next day I brought them to school <laughs> and handcuffed myself to a classmate. <laughs> Guess what I didn't bring to school? <laughs> the keys. Long story short, I'm in the principal's office about a half an hour later, and they said, Jack, what are you doing thinking this is appropriate for school? And I, and I didn't really have a good answer for that, so I kind of just sat there, and she said, you have detention for the next three days. Please unlock your classmate. And I said, I can't do that. They said, why not? And I said, I don't have the keys. And then they said, why don't you have the keys? And I said, these aren't my handcuffs. <laughs> they belong to my mother. <laughs> was the president of the PTO. <laughs> she was well known at the school. <laughs> Up until that point, she had a good reputation. <laughs> now they think she's moonlighting as a dominatrix. <laughs> she still remembers the phone call. They were trying to choke back the laughter enough to be professional, to be on the phone and say, Marie, 
Jack brought handcuffs to school. He says they're yours. Please come unlock them. She's on, she's driving home reading me the riot act. I'm never gonna be able to show my face at that school again. What are you thinking? Don't you have a conscience? And I said, what's a conscience, Mom? She said, it's that voice in the back of your head when you're doing something wrong. It says, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. And I thought about it for a second. I said, I don't think I was born with one of those. <laughs> we never got those handcuffs back. I think the priest took them. <laughs> There's probably an altar boy in the basement of St. Francis cuffed to a pipe as we speak. But I think, but now that I think of it, Ma, if, if you kept those handcuffs, maybe you and Dad would still be married. <laughs> Guys, you've been awesome. I'll see you actually.